So uh, I'm here with my guy Michael today. He's a, a filmmaker I looked up to since I moved from Chicago, man. Tell us more about yourself. Hey, man. My name is Michael Geffen. Um, people call me Mike Geff. Mike, um, I don't know where the name... Oh, actually, um, the name came from my ex-business partner. He told me I was a gift. So he's like, he called me Mike Geft. Um, but I'm from New York City. Um, I'm from New York. Born in Queens, raised in Brooklyn. Shout out to New York, baby. Um, respect the shot town. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me, bro. Um, I'm 29. I'm an inspiring filmmaker in Georgia. Um, I do anything from short film, short form content to feature films to commercials to um, pretty much taking a project from inception to a finished project. So I like kind of sitting in the producer role, um, assistant directing. Um, I'm inspiring to one day direct, man. That's kind of that's kind of where I want to go. Okay, okay. Uh, Leads to my next question. How did you become interested in producing or work behind the scenes on films? Oof. Um, how did I become interested? Mm -hmm. So, I went to, so I was going to Georgia State at the time. Um, I quit like my, I quit my job one day. I told myself, yo, this is going to be one of the last days you walk into work for the rest of your life. I just quit my job one day. Um, I go to school, um, and I'm going to Georgia State, and I find out that I'm able to rent cameras from the cat lab, which is like the software room inside of Georgia State. So I found out that I can run a Canon T6i. Um, I, start, I start promoting on Facebook, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'm like, yo, I'm doing free photo shoots. Anybody wants to shoot? Pause, just let it run. I'm just gonna sit in place. Yo, come on, come on, let's go, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Look at your ass, man. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, what did you ask me? How did you become uh, interested in producing or being behind the scenes on films? Um, so I quit my job one day. Um, and I r randomly decide, or I quit my job, I'm going to school at the time, and I tell myself, um, I'm never walking in a job for the, for the rest of my life. So, literally, as hard as it has been, I've stayed down for it, but as for the producing, um, so I was going to Georgia State, and we had access to the Cat Lab, um, which is like the software room in Georgia State, and you're able to rent cameras. I got a, a JVC 200. Um, with a Manfrotto tripod, I got a T6i, I was able to rent a couple of cameras at the same time, um, I was able to, um, the clapper board and just a bunch of different stuff, and a lot of the times I wouldn't use a lot of the stuff, um, but I just got excited by being able to rent it, so I would just have it, um, if you rented it on Thursday, you would get to keep it till Monday, so, I just started putting out, um, like Facebook and Instagram posts, and I'm like, yo, free photo shoots for anybody who wants it. Ha contact me now, because once I, once I start doing this thing, I'm doing it. Um, so I start um, shooting a bunch of people. I start shooting, um, I did 60 photo shoots in 30 days. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> didn't edit all of them, um, but I would at least try to edit a picture that way I can send them something, I can do it for myself, it was free. So it was like, if you got anything, congratulations. If you didn't, I probably already got too damn busy. Um, so, I went from there and I started shooting, I, I started, um, I went to my dad's old, um, my, to my dad's cousin and I told him, hey, he has a furniture store. I told him, hey, um, I wanna build a online furniture store. So let me go ahead and take pictures of your furniture, post it online and I'll just sell it online. Um, I hit up my boy Zay and I'm like, yo, I need to start shooting famous people on this furniture. But instead of ever shooting the furniture, I just started shooting famous people. Um, started opening the right doors, man. Started getting in the right places. Um, and then I start helping Ben, um, Ben Johnson. Um, I met him at the process. Um, 
I didn't meet him at the protest. I met him through Murph. Murph took me to his house. He wanted me to help him a little bit in his lab. Uh, I started helping him in his lab. He got very depressed. I started helping him even more. Um, a bunch of stuff happened, and I started helping them with their lab. Um, six months later, he contacts me. He goes, hey, man, um, you want to work um, for my wife's production company? Um, you're going to be working four days or five days. I can't remember how many days it was, but you're going to be doing this, 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 this. Your title's a PA, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, I don't even know what a PA is, bro. So then he's like breaking down all, all everything from me. I don't I don't know shit about this. <laughs> um so he he tells me um he just breaks down what a PA is, tells me what I'm going to be doing. All right, cool. I'm I'm with it. Um tell tells me that I'm going to be making a pretty good amount of money, especially for someone who ain't got a job at the time. Uh so I pull up on set. I find out that I'm working for Mercedes-Benz as my first job Whoa. on production. <laughs> Ever, um, I'm a PA for a Mercedes. Um, I'm a PA for a Mercedes Benz G Class commercial. Crazy. <laughs> GLE, GLS, GLM, the G Wagon. I'm seeing G Wagon being throw like like flown down the hill, bro. Just to like test the axle, bro. Crazy. Um, there was a shot that we had to get at the bottom of. Atlanta Motor Speedway, and you have like the building that's in the middle. I guess it's like maybe the call center, wherever, like wherever, um, I guess the judges are or something. I'm not sure. Um, but you can't see around the bucket. You can't see around the um, around the track. So I rem um, so the director tells me, "Hey, I need you to follow this camera car, and I need to make sure I I need you to follow this camera car and make sure that this." stays on that camera car for good. I didn't even know what this was called. Said, I'm pretty sure he said transmitter. I didn't even know what a transmitter did, bro. Like, fresh out the game. Don't even know anything about this. I know a little bit about tech shit. Know what a transmitter does. But, like, in this field, no. So, I'm following the camera car. Someone walks me. They're like, yo, what do you, uh, we don't have picture. Get it, raise it higher. So, I'm raising what I didn't know was a C-stand. Mm. <laughs> um... And I get it as high as possible. They walk me. They're like, Mike, we still have no picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, all right, one sec. So I take this C-stand and I'm, I climb. Well, I take the C-stand. I leave it. I climb this 10-foot railroad tie. And then I pull the C-stand up. And then I put it on the railroad tie. Mm -hmm. Then they go, Mike, what are you doing? I'm like, do you have picture? They're like, yes. I'm like, I'm doing my job. Little did I know that was to a 250-man crew. And to the director himself. Um, the director and the producer him, themselves. Shout out Jacob. But then he walks by me. He goes, what's your name? Um, I go, I'm Michael Geffen. He goes, you're with Peak for the rest of the shoot. If anyone tells you otherwise, tell him to fuck off. And just walks away. <laughs> um, so my pay got du at least doubled. Um, that was my first project. Very successful, um, and man, it brought me into the industry, and I, it, I could not thank the story enough. And it gets even longer because it's like I met the people through the protests and everything, so it's like crazy. Yeah. But it's like I was meant to be. You know what I'm saying? It's like I feel like I was meant to be here. Like alignment, kind of. Yeah, alignment. like no matter what I did, it was gonna force me in. My dad actually used to do. Um, photography before he owned furniture mm -hmm. my dad did um my dad did photography so he used to do wedding photography um and then he got into furniture how did i get in by taking furniture and photography putting it together never being able to accomplish it but it's kind of crazy because like all this time i was trying so hard to kind of like be what my dad isn't mm. and mm. i became just that um but i'm trying to do it in the right way man yeah that is it's aspiring to like people like me, just like trying to get into. Well, it is getting into it, and just realize it's, it's a, is getting into it. It's getting, yeah, it's getting into it. Just it's like you can do it. It's gonna take a long, long time, but you can definitely do it. It's not easy, bro. Anybody who said this shit is easy, anybody who said this is easy, they're lying. Um, I made a post the other day, and like I really mean it. Like I can't even look at you right now. I'm like trying to look here because like it like. The amount of shit I actually deprived myself of, 
no one would understand. I sacrificed a lot. I, if I didn't have food, I didn't have a way to go get food. You know what I'm saying? So I would sit in here starving my ass off. I got money in my bank, but I have nowhere to spend it because I, 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 I don't have a whip. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't have a license. I don't have a whip. So I'm sitting here just getting into arguments with my, with my ex. I, I got into an argument with her, bro. That was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, bro. I got in an argument with my ex, and I bought, um, I spent $20,000 in one day, like 18000 in one day, and then 7000 Literally, we got back together, and then like a few days later, spent another $7,000. Um, so, like, this was the same Michael who was very, like, all over the place, kind of how I am right now. Um, but it was, but now it's become more tunnel vision i still spend money out the ass but now it's not on stuff that doesn't mean anything to me mm -hmm. um if anyone says it's easy bro they lied um the amount of effort the amount of time uh, the amount of people that don't want to teach you anything they don't want to teach you um, and I see where it comes from. Cause recently I, I started like getting into a point where it's like all the people that are contacting me to work with me, I notice I give them a shit ton of advice and then they just shoot themselves and then contact me the next time they need advice. But it's like, and then I see the footage and I'm like, <laughs> how much you spend on this? How much you spend on that camera? Return it. Pay me the money and I'll do it better for you. <laughs> like, like, bro, it, it, and it's not even being cocky anymore. It's like you realize, like a lot of people would put a lot of their fucking energy into this, their whole soul, their life. We might make, we might make thirty grand from one project one month and make absolutely nothing for the next six. You know what I'm saying? Next six months, you can make absolutely nothing. We just went through the strike. I, I know people who are hungry right now. I know people who are hungry. And they don't have projects. Thank God. God's blessed me. I don't know. I still got them coming and they're not they're not as much as I want. I, I, is it ever enough? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, but it's, ne it's never easy, bro. You got to deal with the lag there's a lot of lag in here like i'll get my house completely clean and i'll get i'll vibe out and i'm like yeah fine and then i get called for a project i'm there for nine days it throws everything off my house looks like garbage my my my, my vibes is garbage uh, you know what i'm saying it throws off everything you might go to the gym you no longer go to the gym that happened to me um you you get hurt on set you gotta lift heavy ass equipment um Everybody hits me up. They're like, yo, bro, if you ever need any help, yeah, I'd love to. And then when it's time, it's like, it's either an excuse or I regret it. Because mm -hmm. it's like, is what you want to do really what you want to do? Because I live, breathe, and eat this shit. Right. And I don't have a backup plan. That's it. <laughs> this is my backup plan. This is my front. This is my A. This is my B. This is the reason I got a pickup truck. As my vehicle, this is the reason I, I I lived and struggled for over two years. Struggled. Not like, like I've struggled for my whole life, but I struggled for two years mentally. And that's the worst struggle there is, bro. Um, so there's just so many variables that no one thinks about that you deal with. On a constant basis. In a deeper sense. You know? Yeah. Man, you, you really just helped a lot of filmmakers just tell us, like, the story from then to now. Cause a lot of people, like, a lot of people are probably ready to either quit or just, like, don't have the confidence to keep going. Because it is a tough industry, for sure. And I've just been here for, like, a couple of years. And some of the stories he had told me off camera has helped me realize how tough it is but how fruitful it can be mm -hmm. in like years to come so absolutely yeah you just gotta um roll with the punches man it's the roll with the punches industry <laughs> like, <laughs> like hey bro i just got called to a 15-day project they pay me like shit 
roll the punches. Right. Because it's 15 days. 15 days of, of not much pay is better than no pay for 15 days. Right. Um, roll the punches, bro. Um, I'm I'm still inspired, inspiring filmmaker. You know what I'm saying? Like I I ain't make it to where I want to be at all. Um, and maybe this is like the the mental game playing in my head. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like I'm so behind. I still feel like I haven't done shit. There's still so, and that's partially because we in a man's world. Like in the man's world. We all fucking going through it. We're all, we're all, we got, we, how do we feel at most ourselves, at, at the most self? We work, we're busy, we feed somebody. It's never about, you're never fulfilled based on how much you fed yourself. You're only fulfilled off of how, based on how much you fed your mom, your sister, hmm. your nephews, your yep. niece. Right. Um... So, there's a lot of variables that go into this, man. Um, but one thing I gotta, I, if, if there's anything I could tell anybody who might listen to this, bro, if I could tell myself, I'm very big about giving advice and never taking it myself. So if I can give you advice and give it to myself is pat yourself on the back. Give yourself the appreciation that you made it this far. <laughs> um, right. You might not know it all, but you're gonna know it all. Not knowing is actually better than knowing. Because if I know, then what else am I going to learn? But if I don't know and I continue not knowing, eventually I'm going to know more about the subject than the subject exists. Um, I'm just like everybody else, bro. I'm just trying to make it in a not a simple way, but in a way where I realize that this is it. I'm happy with what I've done. Man. Um, and a lot, and we don't give ourselves that. We don't, especially as men. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't give ourselves that. And I, I, I need to realize for myself and us as men need to realize that we are enough, we do enough. Um, don't stop, but don't make This be the only reason you keep going, because that mind, that mind, you're not giving it time to stop and reflect. Then once this is all fucked up, everything you do is fucked up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot, bro. But like I said earlier, it's a battle. It's you got you got your world and you got the real world your world is the camera world the real world's still going on so make sure you're able to balance that out right man that just helped me <laughs> not only with like film but just like on some personal stuff so i do appreciate it um let me get back get, going to the next question um what is the most challenging project you worked on since you've begun <laughs> hey man um so i'll say names oof now, now, now you're making me think. Mm -hmm. um, man, you put your heart and soul in every project, bro. Um, and you realize... If you love this, you put your heart and soul into every project. But then you realize everybody's not like you. Um, I was put on a project that... The executive producers were making a movie that they know nothing about, mm -hmm. obviously, because they did no research. They didn't know. They didn't tap into the field. They didn't walk the walk. They didn't walk. They didn't ask people. They didn't ask the neighbors. So they didn't know what they were really talking about. So made th they made this film based off a picture that went viral. Mm -hmm. And they made me a producer, and they were the executive producers. So I decide, um, because these people don't know what they're doing, me being a Jew, I'm not trying to be the Jewish man who took away from a different religion's history or a different color's history, because if I was to do it, I would want to do it in the best way possible. 
And with this team, I realized that I couldn't. Um, so I had to leave probably the most... So I went to them and told them that I wanted to be, um, that I should be an executive producer on it. Because being a producer, they're going to trump anything I say. It's three of them, it's one of me. Um, but I'm doing all the work. I'm dealing with all the, the legalities of um, being able to be in the water. I'm dealing with all the legalities of the, the actors. I'm dealing with getting funds. I'm in all the meetings of getting funds. I'm dealing with the pitch deck. I'm dealing with a bunch. Mm -hmm. This is not a producer's... A producer's job's not, that's an executive producer. An executive producer gets paid for his time. I was also not getting paid because um, I was taking initiative, trying to, I knew I was expensive and they couldn't afford it um, with their budget. So I took on a bigger role, told them that I expect this role. They ended up giving me less work and started to kind of like giving me less, um, less access to things. So I, eventually just pulled myself out of it um the hardest thing the reason that was the hardest project i've ever worked on is because you have to know when to let some things go um did i want to let go of that project no i wanted to do it so bad but i asked myself the thing they should have asked themselves not can we do this project, not should we do this project, can we do this project? And I asked myself, can I? I asked myself, should I? So I pulled myself out, project's out, and it speaks for itself. Um, eventually, maybe I'll come around and make another one, because um, the story de deserves its respect but with the proper approach and the proper work put forth. Okay. That was a good answer. I like that answer. Yeah. Um, how do you describe yourself creatively? Creatively? Yeah. Just mine, bro. It's, it doesn't stop, bro. It like... <laughs> um, a lot of different facets, bro. Um... I, I'm I'm big into like the finance the finance side like I understand the finance side I understand the visual side um, my business partner is really good with like um, the the line of camera and like the, how how the lights should look the, he's great at DPing um, I'm great at thinking creatively but that answers my question answers your question with the same answer as the question um but yeah like i just understand like a lot of different facets of the industry so like the finance side the producing side the acting side the the directing side the the camera operator side the 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 grip side the there's there's many different parts to this industry that exist so because I feel like I'm so well-rounded, I'm like an overseer more than, like there's a lot of things I'm playing, I'm, I'm working on right now. Like I'm working on the website right now, um, but I'm also shooting, but I'm also working on my grip truck, but I'm also putting floors into my grip truck, mm -hmm. my school bus um, grip truck. We call it school bus. Shout out school, Leon. Yeah. Um, That's it. So, um, I put I'm putting floors in my in my in my school bus. I'm 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 not the technical things are not my strong suit, but I have a technical mind where I can think of processes. I'm just not the formula guy. Mm -hmm. I find people who know how to make the formula happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that goes to my next question. I'm gonna ask at least two more. How do you, you or the team stay up to date with the latest advancements in the film technology art industry? Oh, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's never gonna happen, bro. Nah. <laughs> um, it's never gonna happen, bro. Um, so we got two Komodos. Mm -hmm. We got a DJI. Um, my boy got an FX6 that he's dropping off right now. Um, that. I just added to the fleet of cameras. 
Mm -hmm. um, my boy dropped off his RE Classic that I'm adding to the fleet of cameras. We have drones. We have a school bus with a three ton a three ton grip package. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and and the thing is, the more pieces you get, the more wear and tear you have. The more updating, the more upkeep. The once you buy a five thousand dollar camera, that that fifty dollar SD card doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Now you got to get a three hundred dollar piece of storage because the reading and write speed it, it keeps up with the camera. It keeps up with the with the with the shutter speed. Yada yada yada. So to answer that question, never. But I'm doing my best. Me and Colin do very good to like keep up to date. So like right now I got solar panels, um, mm -hmm. like a water purif a purification system. Um, a, pr a projector that I'm going to put in the school bus. Mm -hmm. um, we got LED lights. Fucking, we got LED lights that are very, very expensive that we put in the school bus. Um, we've... Str There's never a way to be ahead a, a of technology. Technology has been ahead of us for 20 years now. And that was probably 20 years ago. We are way behind now. Um, but we are, um, as for AI, that's maybe the question that you were asking. We can't fight it. It's not going to happen. We can't fight it. Um, we can't fight AI. The only thing we can do is learn. What do they say about the world's problems? The only thing that can fix it is money. The only thing that can fix AI is if you learn, because it's learning you. <laughs> That's deep. Um, someone was at my synagogue talking about how, relating God to AI, and I'm like, "You're weird, but like it learns you, bro, and like it become like iRobot is really real, and it's really now." Um, but my my um, where we've actually been shooting TikTok movies. We're shooting the thing that's taken over the world, sadly, um, vertical movies. Um, so we are moving in that in that sector. Hopefully, we come back horizontal because I would love for the world to just shift back. Um, but my business partner is very va very. His he has a vast knowledge for AI. Um, he uses AI to create our um, shot lists. Um, to revise scripts, mm. um, he uses AI to um, um, for like you, you for like you can use an AI um, an AI software now where you can move the lights on screen and it kind of like projects the light around the room so you know how it's balancing and everything. So when you get to set, it helps you better. Colin doesn't need that. He's great. He's uh, he's a really good DP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but he, he's definitely um, very up to date with AI. He's that person. I try to think like humanly creative, um, but on a God level. Mm. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want my mind to start gearing into AI too much because like mm -hmm. you asked me earlier, this mind's too full right now. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I can take is, is a software that knows everything. Um, but don't run away from it. No. Um, it, hone it, understand it, become it, because AI is the future. Um, right. Digital currency is the future. AI is the future. Um, Embrace it. My, I mean, my DJI is probably a very big advancement in technology itself. I got the Ronin 4D. It's got a Oh, it's got a six axis gimbal, so it's like it, it's able to pretty much do dolly shots and different shots that are very insane. Um, so yeah, trying to keep it in touch with the the technology, but like I said earlier, bro, it'll never happen. Just um, knowledge. That'll be the only way that we kind of win and become better than it is understand it before it understands us. Got it. I'm asked two more questions. Let's take a break. I have two more questions for you before we get out of here. Um, first, if somebody wants to work with you as get into the industry, 
how can they work with you and your team? Like a new, not a newbie, but somebody that's getting experience but wants to work on a set with people that are created like y'all guys. Um, so actually, um, Schooly Films, man, I, I'm all for the education, bro. I want to be able to teach the newbies, um, especially because no one wants to. Um, I would love to. Um, but as for people who want to creatively like collab and like join and, and work with us and um, contact at schoolyfilms.com, um, reach out to them and they will reach out to you. Um, also Instagram, Schooly Films, at Schooly Films. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Facebook too, Schooly Films. Um, and there, just message, um, we're probably going to need like a resume um, if you have one. If not, I mean, it's as simple as come on a project, work with us, show us that you have a little bit of work ethic and that you are a vast learner that you like what you do, that you enjoy this, that you live, breathe, and eat, eat it, and we'll bring you on. Um, last thing we want to do is work with someone we don't want to work with. Um, in the industry, it's a very tight group. Correct. Everyone kind of picks and chooses who they want to work with. That being said, be somebody that everyone wants to work with. Um, there's times that I get caught out of character, but... It's about staying, staying on the vision 100% of the time because we have to start this together and we have to finish it together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, contact at schoolyfilms.com, um, Facebook, Schooly Films, Instagram at Schooly Films. Um, just message us. We're definitely always looking for more people. Um, I'm also going to be looking for people at SCAD, um, in terms of SCAD, to start kind of like jumping on projects, doing some of the editing, um, teaching some of the editing, um, bringing them on, having them grip and work different stuff. So I definitely would like to have people want to learn. Um, eventually, I want to get a school. I want to purchase a school. Um, and it's going to go with the brand, Schooly Films. And there we'll be teaching, but also we'll have a studio um, to be able to put on our own productions. And directly from the school, we'll, be te we'll, we'll put the kids to work. Um, so yeah, we definitely would like new, we would definitely like hands on work. Um, man, you need to come to set, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, for real, learn, man. You know, it's been definitely a learning year for me last couple months. Um, so definitely for sure. Um, Man, to all of the SCAD students that follow me on Instagram, definitely get it, stay tuned for that. Um, and last question. Oh, yeah, you went to SCAD, right? I didn't go to SCAD, but I know some people from SCAD. Wait, where'd you go? I went to uh, Atlanta Technical College. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, I thought you said SCAD. I, yeah. man, I might, I might, uh, who's, no. who's that talking to? I don't know. Someone told me they went to SCAD. But I'm working with a bunch of SCAD people right now on all these TikTok movies. Yeah. I want to hear about that too. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I want to just go back to shooting real <laughs> horizontal. And yeah, stay inside the box, like, especially if it's this way, not this way. Man, that's probably gonna be interesting. Um, and last question: I know we was talking about you wanted to direct your your own feature film. Oof. Um, what else would you like to do? What would like make you like what? What is your dream? Your passion project to put it all into words. I don't know if there's words for it, except okay. for Rebellious and Anarchist. Ooh, some deep shit. Yep. Um, I want... I feel like I got into this film, into this industry to show the world what it really is. Because mm -hmm. um, film kind of shows the world what it's not, or mm -hmm. what it will be. Mm -hmm. But I kind of want to bring it back to, like, what it was. Mm -hmm. Um... It's definitely gonna be wild. Um, I got a couple of scripts that I put together. Um, we actually shot Reflections. It was a short. Um, I, we, we shot Reflections about last year. It was a short film. Um, on YouTube? Yeah. Um, it's on the website as well. Oh yeah, schoolyfilms.com, baby. Out. Yeah, complete, yeah. Nah, it's not, it's not complete. It's, it's garbage, don't tell my web, web developer. 
You should put this out. Send me this so I can tell my web developer, fuck you, I'm not finishing the website yet. But it's looking better. It's looking better. Um, but yeah, I got a couple scripts that I'm working on. Um, a bunch of a bunch of wild, like, Inception kind of. You gotta love Inception. Yeah. Nolan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of Inception types. A couple, of, like, stuff based off of COVID. Um, mm. Yeah. A couple of things based off, like, the war that's happening. Mm. Um, eventually, I'm going to make something off my life because... I don't think there's enough words that can go into explaining what I've been through. I feel like it's only able to, especially in the career I'm in, I feel like the only way I can explain what's in my brain is put it on TV, mm -hmm. put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe one day I'll, I'll be okay with myself, you know? I watch myself and be like, oh, it's not that bad. You're not living that bad of a life. Um, yeah, but definitely gonna be doing some stuff. Um, I'm excited. 2024 has been good already um a bunch of projects have been re releasing lately that i've worked on mm -hmm. um we did greg lemond's um greg lemond's um electric bike commercial um he's actually the only current american title holder for the tour de france mm -hmm. and he's the two two time turn uh, he's the two time american title holder for the Tour, tour de France, he's the only one. Um, Lance Armstrong, or Neil Armstrong, the one the one who got caught for steroids. Yeah. Yeah, they stripped his titles, so Greg LeMond's the only one who's actually a winner. Um, so yeah, we worked on his stuff. I did, um, I, I worked a little bit on Nelson Mandela's documentary that released. Um, I've been doing a lot of construction commercials, mm -hmm. um, a lot of like material commercials, um, real estate, uh, short films. I got a sci-fi feature that's praying because it's the first thing in a while that I'm gonna. Enjoy, I feel like I'm gonna enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's gonna be a lot of projects um, that are. There's a lot of projects that are out. A lot of projects in the works. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely, definitely am looking forward to. The rest of this year mm -hmm. and the setup of 2025, it's going to be a lot coming because I'm going to be able to stop focusing on everything I'm focusing on mm -hmm. and focus on just sitting down and writing. Get isolated. I mean, I've been moving so quick, man, since like the last, the, like the four, third, fourth quarter of, of 2023. It's been so, a lot of stuff has happened. Just for me, a viewer, like. Bro, I got the school bus in November. <laughs> like in March, that's bro, bro. The, the the school bus has had its phase one stripped of its phase one, mm -hmm. stripped of its walls, its floors, its grates, scrubbed for all the mold, um, cleaned all the all the all the water that's built up in it, reset the floors, um, painted the inside, painted the outside, um, fixed little locks that are broken, put the LEDs, put a bulkhead so the driver's protected, um, got an ego flow so we run solar. We're putting the solar panels in and it's literally March, bro. Um, and that's that, and probably got about half the equipment since we've gotten the school bus. Um, half of the equipment we have, like double the equipment we have since we've gotten the school bus. So it definitely feels like we're moving fast, um, but Hey man, I'm blessed. God's blessed me, bro. Um, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it unless I prayed every day. Um, Seriously. My mom, bro, she's a big inspiration. She's she's what helps me a lot. She gives me a headache, bro. But she helps me. She's always like, "Are you making money? We ain't come from shit." So it's like. She she always wants to make sure her son's good, you know. She wants to make sure her son's got money in his pocket. She don't give me shit, but like, it, my, mama's son's gonna be mama's son, you know. The love, you know. Yeah, exactly. So just knowing I got that, um, and like I know where she comes from. But yeah, man, the support I got is kind of what drives me. I feel like so, I'm gonna keep taking those blessings in 2024, bring them into 2025. We ain't, we ain't, we. 
First quarter, baby. In first quarter, y'all yeah, better get ready. April first, gonna... that second quarter coming, man. Second quarter coming, baby. Y'all better get ready. Wait, I think. Oh wait, nah. We first quarter's over. Yeah, yeah. First quarter's over. It's already. Yeah, we. Ain't... No, wait, no. March has to finish, right? Yeah, I think January, February, March. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we both. <laughs> Yo, nah, but for real. Um, first quarter's about to finish, so I'm excited for the rest of the year. You know what they say? The world follows the stock market, so. Man. Project's coming in right now, so let's see what happens. Man. Okay, one more question. Name five people that you look up to as directors. Or right, three to five. Oof. Man. I ain't gonna lie. It's hard, bro. I don't know. I don't have like a I don't have like a top director, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. It's kind of sad. Top movie. Whoo! That's the question. Um, shit of all time. Mm -hmm. Sandlot. Or mm -hmm. or Harry Potter. Sandlot or Harry Potter. Fucking classics. Yeah, Sandlot or Harry Potter for sure. Um, Sandlot because like that that that's like the movie that I think about. Like that brings me back to being a child, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. And then Harry Potter, bro. I feel like they killed VFX before anybody knew what VFX was. Exactly. Like they went crazy. Like they was, they they they're the only people who went crazy on VFX. They're the only people that created a non-animated movie series that no one can touch. J.K. Rowling, bro, she created a uh, she created a series that, bro, they went crazy. VFX was, I you watch it today, bro, you're still gonna feel like you're in ma you're, you're in magic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so <laughs> that that's that's the thing. The, my favorite movies are the movies that don't make you think about the director, mm. or don't make you think about the how this shot was shot. Mm -hmm. I, like it's one of the worst things about like one one of the worst things for filmmakers is watching films because we don't know how to like step out of our bodies and like judging everything or we're like oh that's crazy now i know how to do that or like oh i already know how to do that this is how they shot it and it's like the movies where i can get out of my mind and not think are literally the greatest movies period because i'm able to step out of being a filmmaker i'm able to step out of being a, a producer of how much it costs and I'm able to step into the actual essence of the film and how it's created. Um, so yeah, bro, Sandlot for sure. Um, Sandlot will make you feel like there's no cameras, you know? Mm. Um, and Harry Potter. Two classics. Two classics. Man. It's kind of crazy that we're calling Harry Potter a classic, but... Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm old, bro. Yeah, my me. knees don't work the same. Like, <laughs> yo, get this shot. I'm like, ah. my ankle hurt. My ankle hurt. Hold on, let me pick it up real quick. Hold on, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> yeah, man. But nah, man. It's it's about um, going past when that body hurts and still going for that shot. Like, bro, I was shooting yesterday, bro, and I'm just holding it. And I'm just like, I'm like holding the camera like this, cause I'm my body just giving out. I'm like, I've held it in such a and this was the only comfortable position I could ha I could find my body in. Man. So it's like, it's being able to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, bro. And finding better ways to shoot. That's a gym right there. Yeah. Get Man. comfortable with the uncomfortable. Man. Michael Geffen. Man, I appreciate the interview, man. First interview of 2024. I uh, appreciate you, bro. Man, I learned a lot from this man for like the last three years. We met through a mutual friend. Um, I've learned a lot. Definitely has been growing the last three years. He you too, me, man. Man, I'm trying to like you, man. I learned so many the good and Look bad. Look at you, man. You got your own camera. Man, oh, man. I do like the camera, you feel me? <laughs> but, man, I appreciate it. You want to say any last things for the camera that you got there? Um, first of all, thank you for having me on. Um, this is a pleasure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired that you're inspired. You know what I'm saying? I'm inspired that you're even going this far. Wow. Like you said earlier, a lot of people pull out. So it's like, keep going. Um, keep pushing 
Don't give up. It's a long road, but we're not doing it for the destination, right? We're doing it to enjoy the journey, to learn from the journey, and get better when we get to the destination. Because once you're at the destination, there's going to be another destination. So it's like, learn, understand, um, don't be a know-it-all. Act like you know less, to be honest. Because um, people will grasp onto you. People will find you, um, the right people, and they will teach you. And it's better to know, to act like you know less than act like you know more. Because people can tell. So be you. Um, everyone starts. I didn't just wake up, come out the womb and have a camera. Everybody starts. Everyone comes from a story. But we're writing ours. So write that shit. Man, I appreciate that. And we've got to get out of here, man. Peace. Thank you, bro.